Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. This is Q&A Sunday, number seven. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff to cover, so I'm gonna jump right into it. Well, the one subject I'm not gonna cover is marriage. <laughs> A lot of people had a lot of good laughs over that, but I got a lot of knives in my back. <laughs> I think people just got to lighten up a little bit. <laughs> All right, question number one. What is the your favorite video that you've produced? Well, I don't really have a favorite video, but I have my favorite playlist, and it's two of them, and that's the Back to My Roots series and the New Hampshire Cabin Project. And those two playlists go back to back, hand in hand. Um, the Back to My Roots is when I had come here from New York trying to make a decision what to do with the camp because I was living six hours away and really coming here about once a year. But I really thought that when I left, I would leave with a for sale sign on the camp. But... After a few days of soul searching and kicking around the woods, my heart told me that this is where I belonged. I listened to my intuition and decided at that point that I would leave New York, fix this camp up, and uh, that's how it all gets started. So those two playlists have some really good videos, a lot of heartfelt videos, some pretty good humor, stuff about my dad it's just real good stuff and what i like is when i'm i start watching the new hampshire cabin project and i i get to see how far i've come and you know i haven't forgotten about it but when i see it in a video it's like wow you know i i started with a tar paper shack a uh, place that's been neglected for many many years and tore the old tar paper off and changed the windows and then um, proceeded with fulfilling my dad's dream of uh, doing all the cedar shingles in the staggered random pattern and and uh, made it what it is today yeah so it was um it was it's been quite a journey yeah so i really like watching those and the project's gonna kick back up again maybe in a month or so so yeah, if you haven't seen those, by all means, check them out. They're, that's my best work. Um, since I've been talking about the bubble foils, a lot of questions about the bubble foil. People are asking if they could um, replace all the, ins the fiberglass insulation and do it in the walls and the ceiling and everything. And I can't say for sure, but my opinion, what I would do, I said, I wouldn't surround myself with the stuff. A building really needs to breathe. And I think if you did floors, walls, and ceiling, you may end up with some moisture problems, but I can't say for sure. But myself, I wouldn't put it in the walls. I would do at the most the floor. It works great in the floors. You've already seen in the skirting. And... Uh, if I went one more step, maybe the ceiling, but I would do the fiberglass insulation in the walls because I want the place to breathe. Yep. I, I have a friend that goes crazy with the insulation and he does like R70 or something. And then he has to run an air exchanger. So what the hell good is that going to do me up here, right? Ah, you know, why spend all that money and, and closing yourself up and then you got to run an air exchanger. So anyway. I would leave the walls to breathe. That's what I would do. Ah, uh, putting, am I going to put plastic on the dirt under the cabin? And am I going to put vents in the skirting? That's a really good question. Um, I do intend to put a moisture barrier on the ground under the cabin. It's a really good idea if your place is up on piers. And to have vents in the skirting as well. I want to keep the cold air out in the winter time but I want to let fresh air in under the cabin in the summertime I didn't put in any vents yet but I will have some sort of louver or something that I can close off in the winter the only reason why I didn't put any plastic on the ground because I, I need to still do I need to do a lot of digging under the cabin I got to replace some of the piers under there I got a lot of stuff stored under there but 
Um, when all of that work is done, I'm going to take some of my old tarps that really aren't that waterproof anymore. I'm going to lay them all on the ground under there, and that'll keep the moisture down. That's a really good thing to do. That was a good question. Your cabin has a lot of partitions in it. Uh, what do you do for heat distribution? That's another really good question. Uh, what do I do? I do nothing. Nope. Um, a lot of people run all kinds of fans. There's a lot of suggestions for fans. Fans in my icebox, fans underneath, fans up above. Um, I don't want to run fans all over the place. I don't want to eat my battery power if I don't have to. So there's no fans whatsoever, nothing to distribute the heat. And there was a lot of suggestions where people, well, actually, people said that I should, I should, I got a lot of those, <laughs> I should cut some holes in the ceiling and put some grates and let the heat go upstairs. Well, that sounds good in theory, but it's actually the, the last thing that I want to do. And the reason is because heat's going to rise regardless of what you do. Okay, it's just the law of nature. And it's going to go right up the stair hole. And I don't want all my heat to go upstairs. If I cut holes in the ceiling, it's going to get unbearable up there. It's going to be too hot to sleep. And it's going to be, I'm going to lose my heat down here. I don't, I don't want to do that. And what we did was actually just the opposite of that, where we, we insulated the ceiling. We staple bubble foil between the floor joist um, on about two-thirds of the ceiling here and then left the rest of it. And that has been perfect because the upstairs is just about the same temperature as down here. It's perfect, actually. Actually, it's three or four degrees warmer upstairs. I was just informed that it's about three or four degrees warmer upstairs. And Frankie concurs. <laughs> Either that or he disagrees. Where's Frankie? Where is he? Now, he sounds kind of muffled. He's upstairs. He's up. He's barking at me from upstairs. I guess he heard you. <laughs> Let's go find Frankie and see what he has to say. <laughs> Look at him. King Tut. <laughs> is that what you said? It's five degrees warmer up here? Is it? It is? Is it five degrees warmer upstairs? It is? <laughs> huh? Are you barking at me? Yeah? <laughs> That's why we call it a bark lounger. <laughs> <laughs> That's the opinions from the Barker lounger. <laughs> oh, you, you got his, he's adorable up in his Barker lounger, isn't he? <laughs> All right, on to the next question. Where do you get the kettles? And these are two questions, actually. I can answer with the same answer because people want to know where I get those kettles that I heat my water with. I always have a couple of kettles on the Kitchen Queen. And people want to know where I get my cast iron. Well, two of those pans, the two big ones, are family heirlooms. Um, I'm going to do a video entirely on cast iron at some point because a lot of people are intrigued about my collection. And I have a lot of them still in New York. So when I get them all together, I will do a video just on the cast iron. But as far as the kettles are, um, all the kettles that you've seen in my videos are antiques, and I get them at antique shops, I get them at flea markets and yard sales, but they're hard to find, to find a good one, and if you find a good one, they're really expensive, and if you get one that's affordable, chances are they have some rust spots in them, and if you use them on a wood stove, like I do, all the time, all winter long, they usually start to leak. So down in the description below, I'm gonna put some replicas, replicas that you can get. And I'm gonna be buying some myself. 
And that way you have some nice new kettles and they have that antique look to them and they'll serve the purpose much better than the antiques that I have. Yeah, but I like to find, uh, I like to go to these antique shops and yard sales and stuff like that. And I get some pretty good buys on some cast iron. And a while ago, you've probably, if you've been following me for a while, you saw where me and my friend CJ, we went out on a pick and we were in some woman's barn there and we found all kinds of cool old stuff and some antique books that we sold on eBay. Copyright 1883. You like old books. Yeah, Longfellow's, The Song of the Hiawatha. Uh, my old lady loves old books like this, especially Longfellow. Yeah, there you go. She'll be singing the song of the Hiawatha when he shows up with his Longfellow sticking out of his trousers. <laughs> and he sings here. <laughs> that was a pretty good pick. <laughs> All right, next question, outhouses. I've gotten a lot of question about outhouses. Do I have one? Yes, we have an outhouse here, and yes, we do use it. Um, there's been questions about building one. Someone's never built an outhouse before. And is there anything particular they need to know? That really depends on the individual. Myself, I don't get too picky with it. I'd, I just dig a hole in the ground. I put a building over it, cut a hole in the floor, have a bench, toilet seat. You're good to go. <laughs> and I mean that literally. <laughs> and a coffee can. You got to have a coffee can. If you don't have a coffee can, the mice will chew the heck out of your toilet paper, and that's not very good. When I get a job done, I want to be able to do the paperwork and get that done too, and, and it's pretty hard to do if it's all chewed up. So get yourself a coffee can, put your toilet paper in there, you'll be in good shape. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, one more quick one is backup heat. Oh, people want to know, do we have any backup heat here at the cabin? We don't have backup heat here yet. It was in the plan. We didn't get to it. What we are going to have here is the same thing that I had in the shed back at the homestead. That was an Empire direct vent propane furnace. Wall mounted. They're not the most efficient furnaces in the world, but... They are great. They don't require any electricity whatsoever. They're very, very basic, so they're trouble-free. I've had really good success with those. So that's what we will be putting in the wall here. And I'm going to put the same furnace that we're going to buy in the description below so you can see what I'm referring to. Okay, one more question. We're going to wrap it up. How come we don't hear more from Frankie? <laughs> well... Frankie's been busy, but if you want to hear more from Frankie, here you go. <laughs> that ought to tide you over till next week. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you, and God bless. Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss. Frankie and the Boss